hello hello and welcome to another art video and this time it's a bit of a process one as you can see I've got a little container here full of things that I've made um, just sort of doing things with birds and collage elements and things like this but it occurred to me that you know lots of these things they're great but they're no good on their own. They have to be made into something. And I thought you might like to see the process that I use for creating a background. So with that in mind, let's get in. And when I've created the background and let it dry, I'll show you how I would make a picture with those particular elements. Okay, I'm using Ecoline liquid watercolours just to give you an idea of what they look like. This is an Ecoline bottle. It's got a pipette and so forth so you can dispense the watercolor as you require it um, what i tend to do is i will put it onto my palette in fact i've got a travel palette here too and i put it onto the palette i tend to write what i've done and then i let it completely dry because this concentrates the color really nicely and this is my particular favorite combo that I'm using so which is a yellow and a blue to make a green and the particular yellow is yellow ochre and the particular blue is indigo so fabulous this is a deco art traditions blender mop now you don't have to have this all you have to have is a brush that you can scrub about with this one's older it's a great brush they make fa deco art make fabulous brushes so um you know this is a really good one and um you don't want one like if you I grab another one here like for example these this is one of my da vinci nova ones nice point and i'd like to keep it that way so i don't want to be scrubbing with it besides which it's way too small and i'll be there all day so put a bit of water into the brush this brush holds a hell of a lot of water and i don't really want a hell of a lot of water so i'm just going to activate the watercolor now and scrub a bit i'm going to leave some gaps and the first layer it really is pretty simple get some of that darker stuff there i want to keep it dry that's the main thing because what i'm doing i've got some willow components and some dandelion components and dandelions grow really close to the ground so this is not a situation where we're going to have sky in the photo in the picture sorry not photo you know what i mean we're not going to have any sky in here very much if at all in fact so yeah just get that on adding more water if you need to sort of get the paint going again as you can see this is a really nice perfect green in my opinion i mixed it so i would like it wouldn't i so that's the first layer just slapped on all over the place kind of hoping I don't run out here actually and the idea of having it motley like this is that it mimics some of the normal variations of green that you would get in shrubs and so forth in a garden because we're kind of taking a mouse eye view here looking up through the willow and therefore everything's pretty much green so we just get that color on fill some of these white spaces in might come in with a brown we've got here yeah that'll do so as you can see there's no real ability yet it's just getting the paint from out of here onto here lots of ways you can do this but this is just the way i've chosen today it's quite a quick process is there any darker brown in there yeah there is actually corner of my palette okay 
that's probably what I would do for the background. And I'm going to dry that. I've got a Ranger heat gun here, because, or heat it craft tool, heat tool anyway, because I do a lot of card making as well. And this is something that I use for that. It's also good for this. Turn the paper over if you find it buckling. Until it's nice and flat and dry. Okay, so that's literally a five minute procedure. Now, what I'm going to do, just wash my brush off there and get rid of that. What I'm going to do next is to bring in some coloured pencils because I have got, like I said, I want to make some sort of, some coloured, uh, some collage, excuse me, um, of some dandelions along the bottom here with the things that I've made. But over this side, I'm planning what will amount to a pussy willow. So I've cut out some sticks and what have you, and I've got some catkins for there. So I've got to make sure that it all looks good together. Sort of get a bit of an idea of the colours and see if they're too dark, too light, whatever. If they're too light, well, we can darken them. If they're too dark, we've got to lighten them and the only thing you can do with that is either colour pencil or gouache but I'm pretty happy with this so far. What I want is some more texture in this corner here so I'm going to grab one of my Derwent Light Fast pencils. This is chestnut and just random put some other sticks and twigs in over here as well maybe choose another color that was chestnut uh, Mars orange maybe this is quite close to the color that's here which means it blends it quite nicely don't want it to get too dark so just using the pale peach on its side can add some more variation and texture to this background okay where the light may come through and also like I said just a little bit of texture very much like the average five-year-old would be extremely proud of at this point right I'm going to get rid of the color the palette yes now put that away in its drawer and start planning the picture itself. So for starters, this is the main branch and this is the male bird. So I want that to go on there. So that branch would have to go about there. Now this is the thing with collage, you've got to sort it out and plan it, but then you've got to take it all away to glue it. So sometimes what is useful if you're not actually using your camera to film with, um, you can take a photo of it and then you can put it back together again. So I know that that's about right for this main branch. So what I'm going to do is to turn that upside down now. I'm using... Aileen's tacky glue, which I particularly like, but any white glue, any paper glue will work, whatever you've got, whatever you like to use. I've got some wet wipes here too because I get glue everywhere. I must have failed kindergarten, I really must have, because cutting and pasting is a little bit beyond me. Okay, so get that main branch on. And then I quite like this other one, just above it. 
I could probably get a smaller bottle of glue to be honest to do some of this fine stuff because this one is ridiculous. It was nice and cheap, but it's too big. Okay, so I would put that there. Now the next thing is planning the bird. He'll go there. His intended will go here, but she can't be hovering in midair. So I may have to, to think about that a little bit. And at the same time, I want to nestle the birds amongst the dandelions. So I think this first very large piece of dandelion can go down there. What I'm aiming for is richness and opulence. And I want the whole scene to be filled in beautifully and not have gaps. But I don't want it to be so busy that you can't see what's going on. Okay, that's there. Wouldn't be a bad idea if I cut that. Just the taped off border is obviously the border of the picture just to keep it a little bit tidy. Okay, and don't be alarmed at the fact that these birds don't have any legs. That is going to change. Um, okay, so we've got a large flower that could go there, but we could have another one of these first. And again, I'm going to cut that at an angle so that it fits quite nicely along the bottom. Now, obviously, there's more to this than just cutting and pasting. I've done quite a bit of work here. If you like this technique, I'm exploring it in some depth, as you might expect over on my Patreon. So, yes, please do consider joining us if that is what you think you would like to do because um it's an interesting it's an interesting technique it's fun i've actually resisted it for a number of years myself but now i'm addicted to it and birds have always been a bit of a specialty of mine so it was kind of natural to progress to putting them on here All right here again that piece Pausing often to consider what you're doing is quite important because, um, yeah, you want to make it look natural as if it's, you know, sort of all meant to be there. I'm going to have a second dandelion over here. Cut that at an angle. And you wouldn't glue the whole head down because otherwise it's got no texture whatsoever. another leaf I can go there don't want to run out of leaves and things like that that one trying not to put it in upside down that would be a trick worthy of my talents and only find out afterwards when it's been framed that it's upside down I'm that clever. Sometimes you have to reduce the size, not this time, but sometimes you do. So, you know, just be prepared to work with what you've got and use your instinct to a certain extent, just putting them on and seeing what they look like. I really want those birds there. I think, with that in mind, that it's time to start building a branch for Mrs. to sit on. Well, Mrs. to be, he hasn't wooed her yet. It is spring here at the moment in Germany, so it's all fair and reasonable that we would be building pictures like this. So, what I've got here some paper but I don't want to cut her tail off I like her tail so I don't want to do that so what I'm going to do is keep on with these branches until I build something that she can sit on and as you can see it's a very organic process so you would start and just keep going until you've got what you're after Okay, 
he can go over there she could go there and that could actually work down here you can also apply the glue straight on here but you've got to be aware that it may may not hit your branches the way you want them to i actually prefer to put it on the branch itself Right, like so. Okay, I think we are ready for the birds. And he is going to definitely go there. I'm very happy with that there. So plenty of... Sorry, I think that was out of shot. I have to remember that I'm actually filming this and for other people who want to see what I'm doing and not sort of hugging it all to my chest right you can go there again you may need to wipe your hands quite frequently because this is a messy sort of kindergarten way to spend the afternoon right so he can go there and his feet will go right here and here and they will be round here in a second but i shall use different tools for those that really want that in there somewhere but again this one here has to go up the top so that there's room for her legs as well so i'm just putting some glue on here yes the theme of the week for my patrons is seagulls so that's what we're doing over there but it will be the same sort of method that i've used to build these birds because i mean that is my method don't want them on top of each other if you find that happens and this is why i love this glue is position it differently pull it back make it do what you need it to do because they're supposed to be singing to each other i don't want him doing or her doing a tonsillectomy on him right just going to let that dry for a few seconds and while i do continue to build these components and put that in there then we've got some put a little one here actually that can go in there as well i love everything i make uh, i made for this really i mean i was really pleased with it so I would absolutely love to use at least most of it. Now, these are some little fresh sort of leaves, a bit younger. And they can be used to come into the front here and cover some of the scaffolding from the older bits. Give that a bit of an angle. Right, of course, drop it. Okay, so, so far, that's what you have. Um, yes, again, here, want to cover that bit there in the middle because it's not that amazing. It's never going to be because what you're putting on here is lots and lots of pieces of paper, but down the bottom, they're going to reveal themselves for what they actually are, unfortunately. I don't know whether I'm going to use that one. I think what's quite important, here's another leaf. What's quite important is knowing what to leave out. So I'll pop that on there. Because sometimes it's that last piece that you put in that probably ought not have gone right and then these are little catkins so i'm going to pop the glue straight on because these are quite small the catkin heads it's easier to do it this way and because this is all going to be behind glass at some point that will keep them safe. 
and you can put them wherever you feel they will whoops, do the most good. Some of them may be a little bit big. If they are, you can trim them. I'm assuming with these that all of my light is coming from the same direction. And that's this direction here. Um, the same direction as usual, I mean by that. And just stick one there. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to see if they are dry enough. Just cap the glue. Just see. My secret weapon for doing the feet, which I should have got out before, shouldn't I? But anyway, it's okay. Is a, um, this is a very cheap, bought on Amazon paint marker pen. It's an acrylic marker. And it's really very useful for drawing the legs because I can get over the top of everything. Get in there. I could also cut the legs out of paper, but I find them very fiddly. And this one here, slightly shorter. Now, these will need some highlights on them so when they're dry I can go over with other colored markers but you get some sort of idea where they're supposed to go and with the catkins again come in with a pencil this one's chocolate it's a Derwent light fast hold it down and just scribble some shadow on one side They're not quite dry here again hold it on and then scribble some shadow on one side Oop. Don't want to move that okay and this will then just continue. So I will put all of the bits in where they should go. Keeping on like so. Shadow for that one's on the wrong side, actually. Doesn't matter, I'll just paint over it in a sec. Okay, so you just then proceed that's until you've got a picture that you're quite happy with and um, yeah I will show you at the end what I've done but you proceed as normal and keep going and then um, yeah take the tape off frame it making sure everything's nice and dry and it's all good so that is how I would assemble I've actually run out of components apart from the one I don't want to use. So, yeah, <laughs> that's how I would assemble a collage. And uh, like I said, if you like this sort of thing, please do join us and see the whole process from scratch and see what can be done. And yeah, I will see you again in the next video. Have a good afternoon. Bye.